We're very excited. The Alliance has a tremendous presence this year at ESC. We have over 19 uh, presentations being had that have been accepted and will be presented over the next few days. It's really interesting because three of them are from our main Aristotle study, which is our pillar for the, for our um, non-valvular AF indication. And, um, and we've done over 50 sub-analysis from the Aristotle trial. In fact, at ESC, we're celebrating five-year anniversary for Aristotle. And in addition, we have 16 real-world evidence presentations, which is a, a large number when you think about the number of data sets and patient records that we've actually analyzed. Acropolis is um, our large global uh, program that is looking at real-world evidence, both U.S. and ex-U.S. So it's a, it's a global study and we'll have over 500,000 records to date that we've actually evaluated. Here at ESC, over 200,000 records have been studied and are being presented. Now, of those, um, I mentioned 16 studies, eight of them are comparative in nature, so we're looking at apixaban versus other, other oral anticoagulants, including warfarin. So it's a very important study, um, an important data set that we've looked through. But what's even more impactful is that the results that we've seen, the um, significant reduction in major bleeding versus warfarin, is consistent with the results we saw from Aristotle, the main phase three study. And that is what's exciting to be able to see the consistency amongst all of the data sets and actually being very, showing the same, you know, level of evidence that we saw within the main study. The large phase three study is, you know, randomized. You have 18,000 patients. It's very well controlled. But with real world evidence, there are limitations because you're not really randomizing the patients. You just have a data set, patient records, and that's where you do the analysis. However, you also get to get a breadth of patients when you do it through real world evidence. And so while there are limitations, if you, if you create your data in a way that you're actually balancing out the patient records from a comparative arm versus a pixaban, then you are you know, taking away the confounding biases that may exist within real world evidence. And it is the future of data when you think about um, the ability to generate data that a physician is going to have and build confidence for them so that they can ultimately make the right choice for their patient. I think when you think about Aristotle, but I keep going back to Aristotle because that's the pillar of, of evidence that led to the indication. As you think through five years after we presented the data here at ESC, over the five years we now have 500,000 records above the 18,000. So the ability to build on the body of evidence is going to give all the physicians here at ESC even more a data set so that when they're thinking about what is the right medicine and is Eloquist going to give you the efficacy and the safety that you need for the patients in a balanced way, they can see that consistent results, the significant re reduction in bleeding, similar to what we saw in our main study, and finally be able to make the right choice. So it's just building a very strong wall of evidence. I think over the next few days, the, what's going to be exciting is just presenting our data. We have a late breaker as well. Um, we're presenting data not just uh, from our U.S. data sets. I mean, we are expanding on our U.S. data sets from a time frame perspective. We keep updating them. But in addition, we have regional studies. So we've looked at a data set in Germany. We've looked at a data set in Norway. And that is impactful from a European perspective. And this Congress being in Europe, when the German team comes and, and hears the data and physicians rec recognize that the patient registries within their own region are also demonstrating that the way Eloquist is being used is behaving exactly the way we expected from the Aristotle study. That in itself is, is the message that we want our physicians to walk away with from ESC. And in addition, we have um, sub subpopulations that we're studying now. So we obviously looked at the main results, but now we're looking at the elderly population. And to be able to assess that, oh, even in the elderly population, your results are consistent, you're showing significantly lower major bleeding rates in the elderly population is very impactful because that, that population tends to be even more prone to bleeding. So putting that all into you know a package is how we want physicians to recognize the value of Eloquist. 
Yeah, and I think um, being in New York, but having that global purview on how we generate data is critical because we started the Acropolis program with US data sets. Why? Because those data sets were the most mature data sets at that time and we had a lot of patient records. And the more patient records they ha that you have, the more the results are going to show the right trend. And then as, as, we, sh as we completed those studies, we started to look across the globe. And that is what our focus is going to be over the next few years, looking at the bleeding trends um, and ensuring that they're consistent with what we've seen in US. And eventually we'll also look at effectiveness because ultimately what we want to show is that the results that f the way physicians are using the medicine the medicines behaving just as we saw in our Aristotle main study which showed significantly lower risk of reduction in in major bleeding but more importantly uh, significantly lower risk of reduction in stroke and systemic embolism versus warfarin in 18,000 patients and ultimately the reason we use these oral anticoagulants is to prevent the risk of stroke in patients with non-valvular AF and that's the bottom line. So being able to show those consistent results, even with our, um, in terms of major bleeding, even with our real world evidence is critical over the next few years.